In this lesson, I'll show you six examples on how to use your calculator to compute complex fractions and expressions. The question reads, compute each expression all in one step using your calculator. Let's start with question A. Let's start by turning on our calculator. And to give you a better visual of what I'm doing, I'll insert the key log so that you can follow along. So we have a complex fraction where we have a numerator and a denominator. And one of the tips that I usually share with my students is imagine that you have parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. In other words, just pretend that there are brackets around this expression and brackets around the bottom expression. That being said, I'll insert brackets. 1, 2, plus 4,000. Now close your bracket. We're finished with the numerator. And this fraction is the same thing as saying divide. Now I do understand that there is a function on the calculator, such as the one that I'm hovering around, which enables you to insert fractions. Although most calculators don't have this feature, and I want to make sure that you can compute these with any type of calculator. In addition, make sure that your calculator is a two-line calculator like the one that you see me using. Now the denominator is bracket 1 minus and then we'll open up a set of parentheses here. So I'll insert brackets, 1 plus. And notice that we have a fraction within a fraction. This is why it's called a complex fraction. And one suggestion for you is that if you ever see a fraction within a fraction, put the smaller fraction in parentheses as well. So I'll open up parentheses, 0 decimal 12 divided by 4, close, and then close this bracket, raise that to the power of negative 25, and depending on the calculator you're using, the symbol might be different. For example, you might see y to the power of x or x to the power of y, and place your power in parentheses as well. So I'll write down open, negative 25, close, and then close the whole denominator. We end up with 7,680.02. Let's move on to question B. This time we have 2,000, and I've cleared my key log. Bracket 1 plus, there's a fraction inside of this expression. So we will put that fraction in its own parentheses, divided by 4. We want to close the bracket that we opened and raise that to the power of 20 over 3. Now, Remember what I suggested earlier with exponents. You want to place them in parentheses as well, just so that your calculator doesn't get confused as to what it is you're doing. So you want to put 20 over 3 in brackets. 20 divided by 3. You should end up with 2,282.25, rounded to two decimal places. The number here should be 26. Now let's move on to question C. Once again, in question C, we have a complex fraction and we have a numerator and a denominator. So I'm going to place the whole numerator in parentheses, 400, open bracket, open bracket, 1 plus, there's a fraction, which I'm going to place in parentheses, 0 0.08 divided by 12, close. And you want to raise this whole thing to the power of 46. Now, I mentioned earlier that you place exponents in parentheses, so I'll do that again. Minus 1, and I'm going to close the bracket that I opened and then the bracket that I opened originally for the numerator. Divided by, open bracket, 0 0.08, divided by 12, close bracket, and we end up with 21,450.34. Let's move on to question D. Once again, we have a numerator and a denominator, so I'm going to pretend that there are parentheses up here and parentheses down here. I'll type in bracket 300, bracket 1, minus, open bracket 1, plus, open bracket for the fraction, divided by 4, close, close, raise that to the power of negative 32 close, I'm closing this one, and then close again, divided by 0 0.08 over 12, close the denominator bracket, we end up with 
24,580.32 rounded to two decimal places. This should be 3, 3. Let's move on to question E and F. We have a smaller expression this time, 50. And here we have these square brackets, which are the same thing. You just put round brackets. And then within these square brackets is a fraction. So the numerator gets its own. 1 minus bracket 1 plus 0 0.075 raised to the power of negative 8. Close the top and now the bottom. Notice that 0 0.075 is just a number. So technically you don't need to put brackets around this denominator. But if it becomes more complex, you do need it. So just to be consistent, I will add it, but you don't necessarily need this one. Close the denominator and then close the square bracket. We end up with 292.86 rounded to two decimal places. It should be 87. Finally, in question F, we have this very large expression. And you'll notice this term has a radical symbol. That's the third root of 665. I'll show you how to tackle that on your calculator when we get to it. So let's begin. 1,000 decimal zero, zero open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to the power of negative 16. Technically, you should put negative 16 in brackets, as I've been suggesting. But if you just have a simple number or an integer, such as negative 16, you really don't need to. Minus. And a radical with a third root, or the index being 3, is the same thing as saying 600 and 65 raised to the power of a third, 1 over 3. So bracket 1 over 3. Now I do realize that on your calculator, you might have a button that looks like this, where you can actually input the index and the radicand, this number. But I want to show you how this is done if you were to be given a basic calculator. And so this is the method that is recommended. Plus 300 decimal zero, 00. We open up the big bracket. And within this big bracket is a fraction. A numerator gets its own parentheses. Open that up. 1 minus bracket 1 plus 0 0.03. Close that parentheses. Raise that to the power of negative 1 over 16. All in parentheses as well. Close the numerator. Divide it by. Open the denominator close the square bracket, and you should end up with your answer being 403.37, and to two decimal places, we should stop at 37. And there you have it. That is how to become more calculator competent using the tips and tricks that I showed you here.